It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by the Beatsy. Welcome, my friends, to the show that never ends. This is the Mark Inspire Show Day 1912 in a row. We got an action packed show for you today. We're going to get right into it. There's a bridge collapse going on in Baltimore. We're going to kind of go and figure out exactly what happened here. Maybe it's a drunk sailor. We're not really sure yet. We're going to look into it. Also, Cuba Gooding Jr. implicated in the Sean P. Diddy Combs allegations. I'm not sure if you've heard about this yet, but I saw the story. We're going to read about it and see what's going on with Cuba Gooding. Boys in the Hood star going down for SA? You know, I don't know, we'll find out. We're gonna talk about it. It's interesting though, Cuba Gooding Jr. involved with P. Diddy? I mean, not really, you ever see? He's kind of smooth, you know what I mean? And Cuba Gooding, like when he wants to show me the money, you know? Anyway, guys, we're at it. This is the longest running daily show, 1900, 12 days in a row. The show is sponsored by The Beat Seat, the only drum in the world for guitar players. You can sit on it, you play your guitar, you may have seen me playing it before. If not, I'll play you a song before the end of the show today. At 11 o'clock, which is just about an hour from now, we have a premiere. It is Conor McGregor. We did an analysis yesterday during the morning show. If you missed it, you should go back. It was an awesome morning show. I'll be dropping the second story from the morning show later on this afternoon. Oh, another crazy one about getting a house for a dollar in Italy. You're not going to want to miss that one. Anyway, guys, this is interesting stuff. Conor McGregor shrugging making all kinds of weird gestures and, and shaking and twitching. And so you get to see my Conor McGregor impression. I've never done one before. So you got to see that. If you uh, are available, it's in an hour from now, I'll give you the link and see if you can join me in the chat. We have a lot of fun just watching these six, seven, eight mi minute uh, comedy clips. And interesting thing happened. I got a notification from TikTok that my unoriginal piece of roasting, uh, Megan Fox and and Machine Gun Kelly has, has gotten me knocked out of the creator program there, which is another way for me to get monetized. I can't be monetized on TikTok right now either. That's great. So I appealed it, but I did ask them, you know, I have to ask you as the people who are running this platform, because this happens all the time. If I'm a comedy news show and every single word out of my mouth is mine, every joke is mine, every edit on the screen is mine, I did the work, and then I put it out, how is that not original? How is that unoriginal? Is it because Megan uh, Fox exists and Machine Gun Kelly exists and I didn't create them as well? Like, please explain to me. Because if you watch the comedy news roast of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly, you will say, nobody else on the internet thought of this. This is the only guy, guaranteed. There's nobody else who did a roast of these two people. Just me, my words, my, my jokes. And they considered it unoriginal and they booted me from the program. It's unbelievable, you know, so. Um, I, I, I appealed, but I don't know. I'm not sure if they're going to allow it. If they said I could reapply in like a month. And it's just like, you got to be kidding me. You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing after the other. Now I'm seeing a lot of responses from people on TikTok. They're like, yeah, they do that to me. All my original content gets flagged as unoriginal. And I think it's just a way for them to not pay people out for their content. It seems to be because everything I do is original here. I don't have a script. That, therefore, every single thing I ever release on TikTok is 100% original. So many times to lift me out of the negative comment from TikTok. I appealed last night. I'm like, wait a second. There is no comedy news roast of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly unless I create it. I created it, and it exists now. If I post it a thousand times, it's still mine. It's my original source content. Anyone else you see online that's reposting my clips or being like, ha this little 10 seconds is funny. Let me post it on my page. They're not the original creator. They stole it from me. And it's like they did it with the 1775 Bible. And now every time I have a comedy news story, which is 100% me, my comedy, my words, my physical comedy, everything on that screen is me. They're like, Oh, that's unoriginal. My music? I'll play this. I'll put this on. Catch the wave. And they'll be like, no, that's unoriginal. I wrote that live in the moment. 
Do you know how many times they, they've said my original music is not original? They're like, this is unoriginal content. It's not going to be monetized. And I guess if you get a, a bunch of those, then they're like, you're out of the program. And I'm like, but everything you guys said was unoriginal is 1,000% mine. The music, no one else on earth can create these songs. They're my songs. So how could you, oh, the chord progression, somebody else played a G to a C and then to a D. It's, it's rhythm. It's the notes you're playing. It's what you're singing. It's the words. No, one's el no one else on earth has ever said any of them. And then they'll say, unoriginal. So really what we have is this. This is the reality. You've got a, a handful, maybe more, of no talent ass clowns running TikTok's algorithm slash moderation program. And they'll watch and be like, uh, I don't like that he made fun of Megan Fox. She's fierce. And then they'll call it unoriginal. And it's like, no, you, you should be able to beat some stupid idiot couple in the face who's like, we're blood for a pact. Like, I made him. I dreamt about him and created him. And then you're breaking up. If I can't make comedy out of that, you know what I mean? Like, don't go out there in public and be like, we drank each other's blood. We're destined to be together, only to find out like three years later, like, I can't ever, I don't ever want to see the dude again. <laughs> you know, he's my twin soul, but I don't ever want to see him again. You know, maybe in the afterlife, we, we reconnect. You know, that, that's okay. <laughs> you know? So anyway, I'm, this YouTube last month, demonetized. This month, TikTok today, demonetized. And it's like, it's, it feels like every ch platform is like, dude, we really need this guy to stop. We really don't want him connecting with our, with our awesome people who are looking for negativity. We don't want them finding something positive. We don't want them finding something they can laugh at that's not political. We want them at ire. We want them hating each other, divided. Remember, guys, divided, we make more money. This is what's going on in their minds. They don't want us coming together on a platform that's live 1,912 days in a row, bringing just nothing but real creativity. We're going to get into the comedy news right now. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I don't know what I'm going to say yet. That's what makes this show so invigorating. Everything that happens is here in this very second, the most original of moments. Everything else is planned out. Oh, I saw this film. It was an original film. Was it? How many different, you know, drafts did they have before they filmed that? How many times did the, the producer look at it and say, yeah, we're going to shoot it from this angle. It's not original. That thing has been crafted, meticulously crafted to look original, but it's not original. The only thing that's original is something that's happening right now. And so when I do this and then drop it later and they're like, that's not original content. Oh, okay. I didn't live in this moment and create that. And then you therefore decide as some stupid idiot in a room with a keyboard to say, nope, that's not original. I don't like what he said. Let's just to say it's not original. Some of these things I've taught, heard people, they're like, they'll call my stuff unoriginal just because they don't like me. And I'm like, it's weird. Okay, you're a fan of Megan Fox. Now all of a sudden I'm in trouble because I made a comedy bit about the fact that she looks faker than a Barbie doll. Like, it's ridiculous. And you know what? She was a beautiful woman. She didn't need to do it. She did not need to. And she's got bad people around her. They're like, yeah, maybe you should do that nose. Are you fucking kidding me? Her nose was fine. You know what? I got an idea, Megan. Why don't you go like this with your eyes so when you freaking walk, you run into things? That's a good idea. I'll go do that too. These are all kind of things within the comedy news story. If you guys check it out, it's all live. You can see it. It's actually now on Spotify. I just uploaded it. So, guys... There is a rescue effort underway. Baltimore bridge collapse. Did you hear about this? This is right top story. Top story of the day here on the Mark Inspire show. We got to get into it, you know. Here we go. I'm bringing myself on the screen, double decker. And then we get rid of one of them. Here we go. See? Now, if you guys are on Clapper, I want to say hi to you real quick, first of all. Totally not Cody. YouTube, X, Rumble. This is where Main Girl is. And kill it and grill it. It's early in the day, kill it. He's out there doing it. He's getting ready to, for breakfast. There's an aardvark in the backyard. Bow and arrow time, right, kill it? You know, I kind of appreciate the fact that kill it goes with the bow and arrow, you know, when he's going to kill the aardvarks. Some people are like, I'm taking out the shotgun. I'm just going to... Because then I can get it ready for sautéing already. It's just like the blood is, you know, dropping it on. Sauté, pull out a couple of aardvark feathers or whatever the hell's on an aardvark. You know, kill it. You're going to have to fill me in on what's on an aardvark. Okay. But he's doing it, guys. <sighs> Harv? Is Harv in the house? Harvey. I got BDP here with me. And Modoc Roughstock. It's not a party. 
until the genius behind the name of Mark has wood, Modoc Roughstock, shows up. And then you're all of a sudden, everybody's on board, you know. Oh, goodness. Harvey, good to see you. Guys, if you can, leave a comment here. Hit the like. Remember, turn on all notifications. I'm live twice a day, 9 a.m. and after 10 p.m. And this is, like I said, the moment taking place. Whatever we do here is going to be the second happening. So, rescue efforts. Let's see. I want to quickly read through this and find out if there's anything that we don't know yet. Look at that mother bridge. That ain't right. That ain't right. How does it even, like, how do you even get to that point? How did that even happen? It looks to me like this guy was drunk out of his mind. He ran, like, right into the post. He's like, you know what? I could go right in between and kick a field goal. I'm just going to go at the post. I think that would be fun. And guys, check this out. They got for the post this time. And he's going in. He's got, a, he's got a bone to pick with America. He's a Russian sailor. He's like, I go to take down the infrastructure. He's doing it, guys. Taking down the infrastructure. There, in Baltimore. It's early to be high energy, Mark. But we do it every day. Guys, I don't know how else to be, okay? The comedy news show, I like it to be light, okay? We're not here to get you down on yourself and be like, mm, morbid everything, look. Doom, 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 and gloom. No. This is, hey, you know what? There's something funny here. Drunk sailor named Igor runs into the freaking pillar. Guys, I got, look, crash course. I got to the pillar. He's on his way. Now we got this. All, how did all these, look at this one right here. Did you see this? This is like mid, this is mid collision. Look at this. this you got these big cartons like falling over, but it's mid fall. That's a mid-fall photo right there. That means that this was, what you heard while this guy was taking photos was like, <laughs> bridge fall. Is this a guy right here? This looks like a dude. Can we zoom in? That's a freaking guy standing here at the front while they're going through the bridge. I bet you that's Igor. Guys, look, I got for front row seat. He's down there. He's got his vodka. I go drink it. I drink the vodka. I go to the pillar. He didn't think he was going to make it. Igor thought he was just going to be like sacrificed. The front of the cargo ship, running into the bridge, mayhem, <laughs> steel everywhere, cartons. You know, Igor's in the front just chugging his vodka, waiting for the Coast Guard to show. Igor, I did the peel. I took the ship. I took down the bridge. I call Putin. You get on the phone with Putin. Vladimir. Vladimir, I am here on the cargo bridge. I take out Baltimore. Is the mission is complete. Guys, mission complete. Vladimir Putin's happy. He's drinking vodka back home in Russia, you know. Yes, I have the Russia bring the cycle code to kill America. You know, that's what they all want to do. Guys, Dali cargo vessel. This is probably not out of Russia. It's a Dali. So it's probably Indian. We can't go there. And yes, I could do the impression. I could do any impression. But you can't go there, okay? Have you seen Simpsons? Did you see what happened to Hank Azaria? <laughs> I could do Hank Azaria doing the dude from Simpsons. Dead on, okay? Wow, guys, you come down. You still have any impressionist you there. You Christopher Walken, you talk. You talk. Day after day. He's a cargo ship, you there. You see he runs into a bridge. You're like, wow, get out of the car, Igor. He's in the front drinking vodka, taking it down, call Putin. Guys, when Vladimir Putin got on the line, he was first, he was pissed off. He said, like, do you know what time it is you call me right now? I drink a vodka time, you know? You can't call Putin during vodka time. Anyway, guys, let's see what happened here. The large cargo ship crashed into the pillar. I wasn't even, I was joking. I was joking about the pillar thing. He did it. He's a pillar. Like, th this, I mean, this guy, didn't he go to school to learn how to not hit a pillar when you're, you know, steering your cargo ship? He must have missed that class. You know, maybe he was, he was sick that day with the CV. Dr. Weasel Frodge. He was like, look, you got to go out there and get you 7,247 masks. Put them on. Put a double deck of bunk boom. You get one he. You get one there. You die. From the CV? No. But it's not because of the other thing. Oh, it's not? 
<laughs> and we'll never talk about it again. We'll pretend we did nothing wrong. It was all for your benefit. Awesome. <laughs> you guys really kept to that one to a T. At least two people were rescued from the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. Igor was not one of them. <laughs> Died of alcohol poisoning, they said. When they when he arrived, you know, they were like, the Air Coast Guard, like, who did this? They're like, the friggin' drunk on the front with the vodka bottle. They got their bottle on the ground. Igor, he's like, at that point, you'll be, uh, he's singing some weird Russian, like, dreamscape, you know? And then, you know, he's in God's hands now. Or the devil. We're really not sure. You know, you can't tell. We don't know where, you know, what the judge is going to say afterwards. So guys, at least two people, they were, they were rescued. Poor Igor, he's not one of them. Wallace said rescuers were looking for at least seven people. Igor we know about. So now it's down to six people. It's unclear if that total includes the two who were already rescued. We're not really sure yet. We're, we're working on that one. Maryland Governor Wes Moore declared a state of emergency. Guys, did you know that there, there's a state of emergency right now? In the Maryland state, Joe Biden can't even go back. Isn't he from Maryland or is he from Delaware? He's, I think he's from Delaware. It doesn't matter. He doesn't know either. Uh, a 1.6 mile bridge named after the poet who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. I know you guys canceled him, right? He did it. He had slaves. They all had slaves back then. It was a horrible time in history. We learn from history. We move forward together so we don't make new stains today for the future to look back at and say, those freaking morons. You guys want to be the freaking morons? Let's keep hating. Let's keep dividing. So in 30 years, they look back at us and say, these freaking idiots created more stains. Think about it. It's very simple. Oh, I love you. Let's connect and let's get over all the bull crap in this world. It's really, I mean, like, I think it's funny when you, when you come in contact with any human being, you get along with them right away, don't you? Like, I run into everybody. We smile, we talk, we get along. No one's talking about politics. No one's talking about who their guy is. No one's talking about any of that stuff. They're just, hey, you're a human, I'm a human. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. It's when you start learning about the little things we don't agree about that all this hatred and division comes to, to the surface, and it's just a bunch of BS. I want you to understand they intentionally only force the three or four subjects that get us to hate each other, and anything else that could be in your face, they won't let you find. They won't let you find a guy who wants to show up every day and just tell you what's real. They won't let you find a guy who wants to just do comedy news and say, the Francis Scott Bridge had a drunkard on it. Igor. And Putin was involved. You guys know it. <sighs> What's this? That's a new, look at this. That's a flat earth map that they use. Why? Make it look like a globe if it's a globe. Freaking liars. I'm so sick of everybody. You know what I mean? Like everything is a deception to, against us. And the biggest deception, there are no sides. They get on TV and they play these parts and they go, mm, Democrats bad. And then they go, mm, Republicans bad. And then they have freaking dinner afterwards, signing bills for trillions of dollars that fill their pockets, special interests, right? And then we're like, wait, how is this going on? And then the other people are like, wait, how is this going on? Because they don't do anything for us. Either side, get with the program, people. Oh, this is a freaking fire show today. <laughs> you know, guys, when you're in it, when you're living in the real world and you've been demonetized by YouTube, you've been demonetized by TikTok, you kind of say, go F yourselves then. You know, I'm just going to go back to being me and not going to hold back anymore. I'm still not going to do pol politics and the no news, but I will say what's real. I'm not going to stop myself. They clearly are afraid of me. Sorry, I could speak eloquently and I could say how I feel. Oh, let's stop him from being found. Homeland Security says collision was not an intentional act. Joanne, they say not intentional. <laughs> Joanne, stop wheezing. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Joanne, it's disgusting. You know, <laughs> Joanne, what did you, gosh, what did you eat today? Joanne, she's been in the sewage again.
can we can we get a fan here? Felix, can you turn on the fan? I mean, I can't. I'm here. Joanne wheezed and tooted. And, and I, I can't even, I need fresh air. Felix, please. You know, you can't get good help anymore. Anyway, Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas confirmed in an ex post that there are no indications that this was an intentional act. And you guys know you could trust him. You know, he's doing a bang up job. You know, trying to go after political opponents and all. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> that's interesting stuff. You know, all the countries around the world that are like Russia, Cuba, all these people are like, yeah, this looks like our playbook. <laughs> like, Ukraine, they're like, yeah, we do that too. We get rid of our enemies, our, our political opponents. <laughs> and then you get the people to believe that it's for a, a just reason. <laughs> because you got a bunch of liars running the media. It's awesome. I love America. It's so great. You know what? America's great when we shut off all of their lies. When you shut off the negative. I shut that TV. I shut that TV off five years ago, guys. When I t turn it on, I get pissed off in a second. I just hear lie after lie. And I'm like, I, ugh, I can't. And I'm shutting that thing off, man. It's nothing but lies and propaganda. And it's like, why? And I don't know when this happened. You guys probably heard this before, but the, not the former president, but the one before that, again, as a nation of racists, apparently, voted in a president twice that's black, but they're all racists, apparently. But, and so let's just dissect this for a second. You had a guy in that the whole country unanimously was like, yes, let's move forward as a country and let's vote in Barack Obama. Then he was shit. And we're like... No, we can't have another four of that. It would have been great if he was good. We came for four more years. I didn't vote for him the second time because he was crap the first four. And then, nope, not a racist nation because they voted him in for a second term. It wasn't because of the second term that it was because of his color of skin. People really truly believed he did good. But if you look back, okay, American, you know, the, the Affordable, Affordable Air, uh, Care Act. Anything else? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to ba bang on him, but what I am trying to say is he apparently signed in 2012 a executive order that allowed propagandizing of the American people. And since then, thank you, Obama, since then, we get nothing but lies. There's no truth at all. No matter what you're going to the TV for, you're getting nothing but negativity and division. The intention is to get you to go home and start hating each other. So then you can't even consider, like I saw a funny clip. Someone was saying, would you rather date a convicted felon or a MAGA supporter, Trump supporter? I don't even know why they use this term, a Trump supporter. I feel like you have two choices. Is everybody MAGA just because you don't want to vote for a guy who's a sleep sofa, shits in a triple diaper, doesn't know who he is, can't fucking walk around a stage without like falling and doesn't know where he is on that stage or where the stairs are? I have that choice or I've got a guy who did a good job for four years and we had a great economy. He said a lot of really instigatable, I guess, uh, you know, uh, situations took place because of him. Like he, he says a lot of volatile things. We have to understand that. That's who he, he's not a politician. No one ever said this guy's a politician. He's a businessman who made our country a lot better while he was in. And now we have somebody who's giving our country away to every other country, opening it up to everybody. 40 million people here who don't follow our rule of law. And this will guaranteed be pulled down today for just saying the truth. Sorry. Shouldn't have done it because now I'm going to get in trouble again by dick tube. So what do we know about the key bridge collapse after that rant? It was built in 1977. One of the longest continuous trusses in the world was. Was one of the longest continuous trusses in the world at 1,200 feet. Now, it's about 550, you know. The bridge spans one, did, spanned 1.6 miles, but the overall structure is closer to 11 miles. What was closer to 11 miles long. The bridge was last inspected in May 2021 and received a fair rating. You know, we're looking good, guys. We're going forward into the future. We've got a fair rating here on this bridge. This means the inspectors deem the bridge as sound, but that it may have had some minor issues like cracks. You know, how is something fair? How is anything with cracks fair? You know what I mean? Like, I, this thing could just kind of fall over into the water. Well, we have passengers driving on it. Not give it a fair rating. You couldn't get a, a welder out there and fix those cracks? What are we doing here? Baltimore. You know? Red line in it. Here we go. The, how busy is the key bridge at its peak? The bridge has a four-lane strip. 
got like thousands of cars on it at once. But yeah, there's cracks. It's fine. We're going with fair on this one. Oh, goodness. The four-lane strip serves as an outermost crossing of the Baltimore Harbor and described as an essential link for Interstate 695. It is also the entryway of Helen DeLitch Bentley Port of Baltimore, which is the largest port in the U.S. for specialized cargo like trucks, tractors, and trailers. The bridge carried more than 12.4 million commercial and passenger vehicles in 2023. Nearly 34,000 people a day on average travel across the bridge. Guys, imagine cracks. Did you guys hear that? The Dolly... A 985-foot ship was chartered by the Danish shipping company, Maersk, and was en route to Colombia, Sri Lanka. Dolly was operated by charter vessel company Synergy Group. You know them. A local pilot was in charge of the ship. How the freaking heck did some guy from Baltimore run into the, to the pier? Are you kidding me? A local pilot was in charge of the ship because, as Weidefeld said, there are usually better equipment. They are better equipped to maneuver ships in and out of Baltimore's port. <laughs> Not this freaking guy. You picked a winner this time. You know, Synergy Group. You know, do you guys? Do we have anybody from Baltimore here? Yeah, I'm from Baltimore. You're our guy. You know, this guy gets behind the wheel. Yeah, he's got an eye going this way. He's got one going that way. And he's like, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, dude, what are, you, what are you doing, buddy? That's the pier over there. You're not supposed to go at the pier. You're supposed to go like in, right in the center, you know? If you take out that big pier right there, what are we going to do? The bridge is going to collapse on us. I'll be good. <laughs> the local Baltimore fisherman slash uh, whatever the hell he is. I hope this Elgato's not on. I'll be very upset. Oh, man. I'm out of my mind. Okay? Just at the end of the day. I live in the moment here. So I'm not trying to offend anybody ever. I just want you to know that. But I will always do the comedy that my, <laughs> my intuitions tell me to run with. All right? And Baltimore has got some screwy dude who behind the wheel over there, you know? Or the guy has like one arm. <laughs> you can imagine that one. They're like, uh, we're looking for someone to do the Baltimore stretch. Who do we got? Anybody from like New York or Baltimore? I'm from Baltimore. Oh, uh, that guy back there is from Baltimore. Uh, uh, buddy, do you have one arm? Yeah, no, I'm good though. I lost it in, you know, in a training mission back in the Baltics, you know? And they're thinking, you know, we got a big, it's 985 foot cargo vessel guys are we good with one arm willie over here is he going to be the one doing this and getting us in and out of the pier what's that derek derek you think we're good give it to the one arm bandit all right we'll do it so they give it to the one arm bandit you guys saw what happened here you know oh nope that's that's uh princess kate i'm feeling terrible about what she's going through you know i gotta say i've seen a ton of people saying that this is a deep fake I don't think it's a deep fake. I think this is truly, you know, she's, she's going through something really bad right now, guys. You can actually see her hands. But, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I do deep fakes. Not like this. Mine are fake. They're comedy deep fakes where you could tell it's a fake a face swap. There, are, there is some amazing technology. But to me, this looks exactly like her. I don't think there's anything. Like, I had saw a couple friends who are like, oh, look, it's a deep fake. And they're like, check out around the thing. And look, it's like, you see these? And I'm like... It's a video coming across an internet stream. Sometimes there's shake from that. You know what I mean? We're not all dealing with perfect streaming. Um, but I think that she's unfortunately dealing with cancer. And, and I'm very sad for her and her family. And it's also troubling that her father-in-law is also dealing with the same. And he's got pancreatic, which is like, whew, what a nightmare. Um, so just quickly, I want to bring this up. I want you guys to know about this. Let me know what you think, especially over here on Clapper. If you guys can, head over to X, Rumble, or YouTube. You can see the show best, and you can actually see all these stories right over my shoulder. We scroll together. You can read along with me and see where I deviate and create comedy. This is the show every single day, twice a day, 9 a.m. and after 10 p.m. And there's also a lot of music here. I know right now I'm in the comedy news, but I have a guitar sitting next to me. I invented this drum. It's the only drum in the world for guitar players. I sing and play music and write songs live in the moment for you. There's 209 songs on Spotify. Just type in Mark Pyers, not Mark Inspires. 
Because if you can tell, Mark Inspires is the name of the show. But if you take that INS out, my name is Mark Pyers. It actually winds up being like amazing that I'm the host of the longest running show on earth, 1912 days in a row. Because this is an inspirational show. Anyway, producer who accused Sean Diddy Combs adds Cuba Gooding Jr. to sexual... Ass- I'm not going to say the words. I don't know what I can say here. Harassment lawsuit. A producer who filed a lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. Is, is it Diddy or P. Diddy? I call him like P. Diddy. Is it Sean Diddy? Like he's the worst. Every breath in. Yeah, we know. You stole that from freaking Sting. Last month is accused actor Cuba Gooding Jr. of S.A. or harassing. S. harassing. Can I say the word sexually? Is that not all right to say on YouTube? I don't know. I mean, they do a lot of weird stuff here. It's just like I'm harmful, apparently, for reading the news. Um... And assaulting him. Amended federal complaint filed Monday night's shows. Okay, here we go. The amended civil complaint was filed by the U.S. District Court in Manhattan hours after federal officials searched Combs' homes. Combs is a subject of a federal investigation, and several people have been interviewed by federal officials in Manhattan in relation to allegations in- involving sex, drugging, assault, illegal narcotics, and firearms. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News. Representatives for Combs, 54, did not immediately respond to NBC News' request for comment. The producer, Rodney Lil Rod, you guys know Lil Rod Jones, he filed an original lawsuit against Combs and others in February alleging that Combs forced him to procure sex workers and pressured him to engage in unwelcome sex acts with the sex workers, you know? The amended suit alleges that Gooding Jr. groped Jones while on Combs' yacht. I told you, Cupid Gooding's on kind of smooth. You have to wonder if behind the scenes, he's banging it out with a duder. I'm just saying, you never know. Uh, it seems like it based on this story. Cuba began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs. Double leg, both legs. He's like, I like this. Do you ever see my movie, you know, Boys in the Hood? <laughs> All right, buddy. I liked you better than Jerry Maguire. Uh, his upper inner thigh is near his groin. They didn't, I didn't see that one in Jerry Maguire. Uh, the small of his back near his buttocks. Show me the money, right? Show me the money, Jerry. Remember, he's doing it. And his shoulders. Jones, you know, he's the one who came out and said, this happened. He grabbed my hiney butt. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Cuba Gooding Jr., you know, Boys in the Hood star. He rejected his advances. And Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. His best friend was shot up, Ricky. Ricky had so much potential. Guy could play football. You know, he could really play. (laughs) Ricky! Probably the best Cuba Gooding moment, you know, looking up at the sky. Ricky! Ahmad Rashad. No. <laughs> kind of resemble each other a little. Okay, guys, Cuba Gooding has not been charged with the crime. He's just being kind of accused of it, and then they're going to look into him, and they're going to check him out. Fingerprints, video on scene. You know, there was, of course, the body cams. You know, because Diddy had all of his people wearing body cams. He did an Epstein. He wanted to make sure he had some footage, you know, so he could use it as blackmail. In a different case, Gooding pleaded guilty... In 2022, of a misdemeanor charge that he forcibly kissed a worker at a New York nightclub in 2018. So he's now has a history of being a little bit of a force, you know, forcible deal. Like, I'm going to show up. I'm Cuba Gooding Jr. I did it. Ricky got shot. I was there. Boys in the Hood style. How about a kiss? You know? Show me the money. And that's what she said. And he's like, I don't need to pay for a kiss. I'm Cuba Gooding Jr. Show me the money. Show me the money, Cuba. And he's like, ah, right. Uh, So Cuba completed alcohol and behavior modification counseling. And then he was allowed to withdraw that plea and pleaded guilty to a lesser harassment violation. Uh, Monday, federal agents with the Homeland Security Investigations Unit executed search warrants at properties belonging to Combs. There is no information connecting Gooding to any of those searches. And it's not clear what the searches entailed. Probably looking for anything disgusting, you know, debaucherous activity from the Combs family. 
Uh, Combs has been accused of misconduct and being a horrendous producer. One was quickly settled and there are three uh, pending. Combs has denied the allegations that he's a horrendous producer and says when he stole every breath I take, it was genius. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was Kanye who said that. Jones said in the lawsuit that he worked on Combs' latest album, the Love album, off the grid. You know, the album was released in September 2023 and was nominated for a Grammy. You know, he got one again, guys. The suit alleges in part that Motown Records and others benefited from his work on the album and that he was not fully compensated. You know, Monday's amendment comp complaints filed by the attorneys for Jones contains a declaration by former Motown Records, Ethiopia Habnaptimarium. Her name is Ethiopia. That's a country. She's named after a country. That's pretty cool. Hi, my name is Denmark. <laughs> no, I thought it was Mark. No, it's Denmark, Pyers. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, Germany. <laughs> right? What are we talking about over here? Ethiopia. Um, no, you can't get everybody on the line in Ethiopia, okay? You, you want to get out of the megaphone? <laughs> Ethiopia, hear me! <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, your name is Ethiopia? What? Are you kidding me? All right. That's a, that's a good one. Your parents, they did a good one on that one. Guys, or it's made up. Her name's really like Erin. She's like, call me Ethiopia. <laughs> You're like, all right, buddy. You feel like an Ethiopia? Like a country? You're that big. Motown Records. She knows it, the, how big they are. And she's like, I'm a country. I'm a small country here in the American music landscape. Let's just call it Ethiopia Records instead. We're getting rid of Motown Records. We're going to Ethiopia Records. The lawsuit seeks damages, including punitive damages, but does not specify an amount, seeking amounts to be determined at trial. So, guys, apparently we know this happened yesterday. I did a story on it. But did he? He's been diddling around, doing some really disgusting things. There's a chance that Cuba Gooding Jr. was playing his part from Boys in the Hood all over again when Ricky got shot, you know? <sighs> Ricky! Not my Ricky! Remember? You guys remember. Not my Ricky. She was a crackhead, too, but she was able to step aside for, from the crack and say, Not my Ricky! He was the good one. Like, you're the bad one. She was, you should have been you, she said to her other son. <laughs> he didn't get shot. No, Ricky did. Ricky died. Other son was a scumbag. You know, he's like out there dealing drugs. Ricky's a good guy. Staying out of the streets. Staying off the streets. Went to get milk. Get shot. Not my, not my Ricky. It's actually real, by the way. That's actually real. Like, that's probably like based on actual events. Do you know there's a kid? There's always a kid that's like, trying to get out of the system. Great kid, smart kid. And then there's those freaking scumbags that are like, hey, Ricky, why don't you come be a part of the gang? You could be a blood or a crip. We don't freaking care. You just join, you know? And Ricky's like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to just keep to my books. I'm trying to get out of here. You know what I mean? All right, Ricky, why don't you get me some milk? <sighs> Not my Ricky. Gosh almighty. You guys remember. I hope you saw that movie. It's freaking, I haven't seen it in 30 years, but it's an awesome movie. I can't believe I remember all of that. Oh, goodness. So, here we go. Sean uh, Diddy Combs. I guess he got rid of the P Diddy. I didn't realize he got rid of the P. That wasn't the way he got rid of his P. You guys know. <laughs> it's part of the lawsuit. Uh, he landed his private jet in the Caribbean amid U.S. home raids. So, he landed in Antigua. The question is, are they going to allow him to leave? Or are they going to extradite him to the United States? Because I'm pretty sure Diddy on the freaking ghost. He's out. He's out. We're never going to see Diddy again. He comes back. They, like, bleach his skin. He shaves his face. Puts some weird design in his hair. Earrings up the ear. You know what I mean? And he comes back. Ta tattoo on the face. Does a, a Mike Tyson. He comes back. No one knows it's him. It's the game. They're like, wow, look, the game came. And he looks a little like Diddy. No. Diddy just disappeared into a mountain somewhere in Sri Lanka. You know? That's what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm just looking into the future here. You guys know Diddy takes off, comes back, brings Tupac with him. Together, they're like, guys, we dead at. You know, I miss Tupac. <laughs> uh, Joe Rogan slams NYC's banana squatter policy. You're basically allowing people to steal other people's homes. Yeah, hello, I did a news story on this the other day. What the freaking heck? You know, you do the news story on the squatters. And then Joe Rogan gets all the credit doing it three days later. I was on top of that. The first story came out from me. 
Joe Rogan stole it, you know. I'm gonna have to give him a call. <laughs> Yes, may I speak to Joe Rogan, please? Uh, yes. Yeah. No. They put you on hold there. God almighty, they must be busy. <laughs> yes, uh, no, this is um, Mark Pyers. I'm calling from the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the Mark Inspires. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're a huge fan? You gotta be kidding me. I'm calling Joe Rogan to try to give him a crap. And you're actually a fan of the show. Is that why he did? This story we're seeing about the banana squatter policy after I did it first here at Mark Inspires. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, guys. No, I'd love to speak to him. Can you get him on? I, I don't give a crap if he's on air. Tell him to take a break. All right, I'm on air too, all right? Rogan's not going to take a break to get on the Mark Inspires show, five people on Clapper. You got to be kidding me. You know, listen. I just want to pass a message along then. Just let him know this, okay? I did the freaking squatter story first, okay? How about some credit? How about when it says, the podcaster was discussing a story he saw on the Mark Inspire show about squatters in New York City with David Tell and Ian, Ian Fidance. I mean, that would be helpful for the show. You do know we got demonetized again today. <laughs> yeah, comedy. I know. <laughs> I, I know, Fidel, I mean, what are you gonna do about it, you know? These are private companies, you know? It's not like I could do anything about it. Private companies. <sighs> Goodness. Yeah, no, uh, look, yeah, tell them to call me. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, I, 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 we're looking for you in the chat. Hold on, I'm not on YouTube, give me a second. Guys, do you see him? Jesse's in there. Jesse, hold on a second. Hilly Billy, Hilly Billy's there. Do you see Hilly Billy in the chat? You're on the wrong channel. Gosh almighty, you know we're on multiple channels. Yeah, no, I'll look for you. <laughs> Guys, they stole it from me, fair and square. I think it's, to them it's fair and square. You see it online, you just do a story on a story. You know, I get it, I guess, but it would be nice. It would be nice to get the credit. Mexico's president says migrant flow into U.S. will continue if root causes are not addressed. Are the root causes not closing the border? and saying, hey, we'll give you 450 k if you get here, and we'll give you a house, and we'll give you a stipend, and we'll put your, you know, into a hotel, and veterans and people that are homeless in the U.S. go F yourself. Is that what, is that what we're talking about? Is that what the Mexican, you know, president's talking about? Because that's what's going on here. So uh, you don't have a case, okay? Gen Z couple stunned to discover they got pregnant a week after meeting. That is interesting. So banged it out the first night, second night, third night, fifth night. By seventh night, you're like, mm, I don't feel good. Well, you know, you told me I didn't need to be protected, so to speak. You know what I mean? And you're the one now who's complaining. We're pregnant within seven days. You know? You know that first week, like rabbits, you know? Feeble, confused, and tired. <laughs> I love that. Really? Have you seen the current man sitting at the Oval for the last four years? Brain dead, diaper full, and completely oblivious. That's what the title should be. Ghostbusters actor Ernie Hudson says he's only pocketed $370 from his first big Hollywood paycheck. What? $370? Nearly five decades ago, Ernie Hudson made his first appearance into Hollywood out of the veterans' countless films and two TV appearances. One of his widely known roles was Winston Zeddemore in the Ghostbusters franchise. Do you guys remember this? Franchise that grossed $297 million worldwide. What's more is the later installments, Ghostbusters 2, uh, $215 million, and Ghostbusters Afterlife, $204 million. All of them starred Hudson. Before being a part of the box office smashes, Hudson experienced his fair share of receiving low pay. During the promo run of 2024's Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, he revealed the root, what he earned for his big payday as a Hollywood actor. My first big check was $10,000 for one day's work. I was behind on rent and I told my landlord I was waiting for the check to come. However, Hudson was aware of, of just how much this check was going to be. Uh, the check came and it went to my agent, my manager, then to my business manager, and then paid my publicist, and then I got 370 bucks out of a $10,000 check. I didn't do a whole lot with it. I wasn't even enough to pay the rent. What? During the same interview, Hudson was asked whether or not he would be opposed to there being a digital recreation of his likeness in the next 40 years. At the rate of how technology is moving, he say he's a believer that it won't be going anywhere anytime soon, including the entertainment industry. I'm, if I'm dead, sure. 
use the, t the digital recreation of my face, and if I'm alive but looking like I'm dead, use digital recreation, Hutchinson said jokingly. Technology has changed so much, they keep changing things. So wait a second, I just want to quickly go over this. You got a $10,000 check, and after the managers and the publicists and everybody got their cut, he got $370. This is the problem with Hollywood. These people, re we think these, all these people are super wealthy. They get screwed. They get screwed by the man. It's so, it's so frustrating to see this. It's, this is a world of people just taking advantage of everybody else. It's really, it's disgusting to see. Wow, cop shoots at and stabs Repo Man who came for his car. What? Look at this. What? What? All right, we're reading this one. Getting behind on car payments? Certainly be a stressful situation, especially when you've suffered a crisis, which you put in the financial pinch. But the last thing you want to do is attack a Repo Man if he shows up to take your ride. Something a cop has been accused of doing. Accused? I've got video here. He's shooting over the neck of the repo man. She's trying to stop. I don't know what she's doing. Get the get out of here, lady. You know? Like, how can you help? Please don't shoot him. Okay, good, good job. You both get shot in the process. The video of the police offer, officer stabbing and shooting at a repo man who showed up at a shopping center went viral. We got to see this. Where is it? I'm watching it. I don't see it. Where is it? Nope. So this is what they'll do sometimes is they'll, they'll put a link there that does, has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Here we go. Is this it? No. I hate this. They can't give me the actual story? Let me see. Attack the repo, man. Guy shoots at Repo Man. Okay, now I see it. Let's see if there's a video. All right, here we go. That's 24 minutes. We're not watching the whole thing. Especially because my comedy premiere of the Conor McGregor, um, Something's Wrong With This Dude, Mental Breakdown Comedy News Story is 15 minutes. I'll give you guys the link. You gotta head over to YouTube. What do you got? What's up for Repo? in about five minutes. This is it. Hey, what are you doing in my car? <laughs> oh, is this it? Moving and count my blessings. Moving and count playing James. Bitch, a dick right now. I don't see any gunshots. I don't know. Sometimes it gets scary out here, man. <laughs> yeah, I be finessing, uh, jugging and moving and count my blessings. I don't want a plain Jane. Got the Prezi looking like it won the election. <laughs> Pack touch down. I don't know. I'm on 3450 McHenry Avenue. 3450 McHenry Avenue. Uh, apartment. Uh, we're outside. It's a repo and somebody's trying to drive off the truck. I don't want a plain Jane. Got the Prezi looking like it won the election. Pack Shoot touchdown, it. I need a toe. You know, some stripper, so I keep me a pole. Big money, but I need me some more. Move that white girl. Oh, here he is. I don't see the shooting, though. Yeah, that's unique. Maybe you can do 
you got to pop open as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Seems like some crazy stuff here. Shut off that thing. All right, I don't see the shots fired. Whatever. I tried. I tried to find it for you guys. Unfortunately, it didn't work out like I was hoping. Let me give you guys this link real quick. I want to make sure you see this. In 15 minutes, we'll be live to watch this together. Um, it's, I'll, I'll give you the name and everything. I didn't actually update this yet, really, to be honest. I should spend a couple seconds here. Look, we'll do this together since you guys are seeing it. Uh, hold on a second. We'll go from here. I just like to get this stuff in there at least so it's not like an empty piece of content. Uh, where are we? Remember we watched that yesterday. All right, here we go. Conor McGregor, illicit drugs or mental breakdown? That's the question here. And I got to make this shorter. It's got to be less than 70. So let's see. Um, comedy analysis, or what should I say here at the end? Uh, you know what, look, people are going to come, they'll either laugh or they're not. I don't give a crap. I'm just going to say what's there. And we're right over, we're supposed to be 50, that's like ideal, but whatever, we'll just leave it like this. And then we're going to do something I showed you guys, I've been doing this lately just because they don't share my content with people, so I thought it'd be a good thing for us to not have it notify our subscribers because they don't share with our subscribers and the ones they do seem to not really check out my content. So what we're going to do is, I'm trying to find something here. TikTok mods are no talent ass clowns. That is so true. Let's see. I'll put this one up. The Machine Gun Kelly thing is the, uh, I have five minutes on an intro here so you guys can get into the waiting room with me. And let's do inspirational today. I don't know what that's going to be. Saving it. And then the other thing I'm doing, I'll show you right here, is scrolling down and in the second section, first of all, they have this new thing about altered content. Like if I do face swaps or anything, I have to click that. I have no tags in here. It's going live in 15 minutes. Like this is bad. And that means no one's going to see this. We have to just quickly do this. You guys have an idea of what we're doing here to try to get um, ready for a new piece of content. I should have done this three hours ago when I uploaded this. But I want to get on the air with you guys. These are all just, this is a helpful thing called, um, what's this called again? TubeBuddy, and it gives me a ton of different tags that I, they automatically populate, and I'm not sure if there's anything good here, but I'm going to put, I'm just going to click a bunch of stuff, because right now, we are very much running out of time here. Okay, here we go, Conor McGregor interview, we're watching that, so that's basically in here, you guys are going to see the interview, and then we an analyze what the fuck is wrong with Conor, and then you get to see my Conor McGregor impression, which I think is probably the funniest part of the entire comedy news story from yesterday. So, do me a favor, YouTube in 10 minutes or Rumble. Those are the only two platforms you can see it right now. Let's see. Conor McGregor Roadhouse. Let's see. I mean, we're we'll allowed to put 500 tags. So, we're going to just do this real quick. Here we go. Tweaking. Conor McGregor interview tweaking. That's a good one, I think. Here we go. Conor McGregor twitching. Conor McGregor funny moments. Let's just do that. And then here's the last one. Roadhouse scenes or um, interview highlights. There we go. And then I'll just put my name in Mark Inspires and see if that gets us anywhere. Now we're over. All right, I'll take myself out. Doesn't matter. No one cares. Here we go. Editor. <clears throat> Another thing I want you guys to know. Every time you get to the end of one of my pieces of content, you're going to see there are four choices there. I don't give you one video. I give you four videos. So you can go in there and say, all right, I got a lot of re really cool choices here. So let me tell you about these choices. First and foremost, I'm switching this because I want to have the first one to be the, the, the Comedy Central roast or the Comedy News roast of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Best work ever. You're going to love it. Go check it out. Then you got the roast of Twilight actor Cam Jigadent with his stupid sweater. Check that one out. Th I'm going to replace this one. This is These Fruits Could Be Killing You. Hilarious news story. But I want to put the James Bond roast in there. And then you're going to have only roasts. Only roasts. There we go. The new James Bond, I should say roast of James Bond. New, and then Shohai Otani, he's staying because you guys know I, I figured it all out. He's not going to the hall. So we're good. We got it all in here. One last thing. Remember I said this is the other thing we have to do. Over here you see it says publish to subscribers. No thank you. We're going to take that off. We're going to go over here and hit creative commons, which means anybody can take my content, cut it up, share it, use it. I'm fine with it. 
I don't care. I'm making this. I want this out there. I want people to see these things and laugh. So use it. Go out there and, and drop it out. Live chat replay. If anybody happens to be there, your comments will come back and be seen later on when someone watches this piece of content. So be in the chat. Be very, very vocal because when people come back to watch the Conor McGregor clip, they'll see your jokes in the chat. They'll see whatever you had to say in there. Or that wasn't funny, Mark. Or yeah, he looks like a tweaker. Whatever. You know, so you have those options. Look at this. MMA news was one of these. Let's pop it in here. There we go. It's got a 21. That's good. All right, so let's save it. No subscriptions going out. We did get a quick, i kind of doing a little bit of a tease. So 30 minutes before you get this notification, some, no, some subs will, and then I have the subscription thing. So then at the actual showtime, no one gets them. So you're going to have to make sure you remember that 30 minute before thing. Anyway, that's it. We're there. We're good. Conor McGregor. And here's the link. I'm giving it to you. There we go. If you guys can click that real quick, just to make sure you see this. Oop, I'm not on the screen. Joanne, but they see you in all of your glory, all of your wheeziness. Gosh almighty, Joanne. I'm here and I can't even, okay, there we go. So, guys, we're talking about seven minutes away from the premiere. Can you head to X, head to YouTube or Rumble? It's YouTube or Rumble to watch this clip. I'm going to... Send it over to Telegram. If you guys haven't followed me on Telegram, make sure you do that because that's where I try to and S-Coop will let you know whenever I'm live and whenever there's a new piece of content. And there's another piece of content coming after the Conor McGregor. Just so you guys know, at 6 o'clock today, this Italian get a villa for a dollar or for a euro, dollar 16. You get a euro, you got it. You go there and you get a house in Italy. In Patecta Patucci. So make sure you join for that one. This is nuts. They split houses up. Like you may get the bathroom. Your, your cousin may get the freaking washroom. Like downstairs is the laundry. It's crazy. They literally give rooms to people in Italy. It's a huge, it's one of the funniest stories. It is better than the Connor story. Actually, no, the Connor story is ridiculous. It's totally different. Anyway, Connor McGregor impression. Don't you guys want to see it? I can't wait. Anyway, you guys are awesome. Let me say goodbye to you. Hold on. I'm heading over to the screen. All right, so, my beautiful people, here with me. I'm in the wrong way. Let's see if this worked. All right, so, Helen, Gail, Townsend, Hilly, Billy, you people are amazing. Thank you for being here with me. I think we had a lot of fun here. Clapper, Clapper, Kamoy, Sally, Medina, and Elizabeth Cruz. Can you guys head over to YouTube or Rumble and watch my Conor McGregor comedy? You're gonna love it. It's crazy funny. And it's only seven minutes long. It's not like it's like a 30 minute long piece. It's seven, I think seven and a half minutes. Of just straight up silliness. Oh, I love doing this show. All right, so I will be back later for a part two. Remember 10 p.m. every day we do this. And thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Until then, five minutes till the premiere. I kind of like doing these premieres right after the show. I don't know if you guys do too or if you think I should give it a little time because you're kind of like, ah, you got enough you are. But it's another seven minutes of me and it's a pointed seven minutes about Conor McGregor. Just twitching this. Go check it out. X and YouTube. Until later. Helen, thank you so much. Illy, thank you so much. And we'll see you in the chat. You got to go away.